right, welcome back to Bayou Time. We're uh, starting to wrap things up with Dr. Craig Walker, who's been visiting with us for uh, the segment, or excuse me, uh, for the length of Bayou Time. We've been talking about uh, he in uh, being the first in the world to perform a new technology. And Doc, I'm sorry, I, you know, I apologize during the break about the terminology because I don't know how to pronounce the words or the technical words, but this new procedure and technology that was used, that you used um, on, to treat peripheral artery disease. And that actually took place right here at Terrebonne General. Uh, but, but specifically, just if we can run again, you know, the name of the procedure and the type again. Yeah, it's called the Turbo Power laser device and, and the whole concept is that it allows us to clean out in particular uh, stents that have been uh, occluded over time. We think this is a big step forward in the ability to treat patients who develop blockages within stents. And we've also talked about the importance to, to get routine checks and then the preventive things you can do uh, to help you know, prevent cardio disease and peripheral disease. But uh, one thing I guess we can kind of wrap up in is, is the links between cardio disease and peripheral disease. Sure. Um, most of the disease that we experience is atherosclerotic disease. It starts off as some injury inside of an artery and that injury can be from, um, from cholesterol, that injury can be from high blood pressure, from smoking, from any of these things, or from diabetes. And we start to build up a, a blockage within an artery that ultimately chokes off blood supply. The more of those risk factors we have, the more apt we are to develop a problem. And that ultimately manifests itself in either blocked arteries or aneurysmal arteries, where they get bigger and weak because of that, where the walls get weak. Either of those are typically manifestations of atherosclerosis. Now, we can get atherosclerosis anywhere in our body. If we get it in the arteries going to our brain, that's what causes strokes. If we get it in the arteries going to our heart, that's what causes heart attacks. If we have it in the abdominal, aorta. That can either kill our gut or kill our kidneys, or it can explode in cases of aneurysms where it simply ruptures and we bleed to death inside of our own bodies. Uh, or if it's blocked leg arteries, then it can result in loss, uh, first off, inability to walk well because you're not getting enough blood flow to the muscles, but then with time can result in gangrene and loss of limbs. So these are all interrelated. If someone has peripheral vascular disease, the chances of them having uh, disease elsewhere is overwhelmingly high. It's not 100%, but it's very high. And so these are very much linked to each other, and it's very important to make those cross links. I first got interested in peripheral vascular disease because it found so many people who had advanced coronary disease that in the past I'd simply missed because they couldn't walk far enough to experience chest pain. Oh, wow. And so they, they had no clue that they had They weren't exerting heart themselves. Problem, because they couldn't. Yeah. They were, they were uh, uh, un unable to really push themselves. So that was an interest for me at first. But then later on, I really got truly interested in the leg circulation itself. Patients will tell you that if you save their limb, that you've really done them a great favor. And I must tell you, it is, uh, uh, when, when someone looks at their foot each day and realizes it was hurting before and that pain goes away, when someone couldn't walk across a room and now can walk for miles with their family, uh, it really does make a big difference. And so this is something that's become a huge interest of mine and something that we're trying to help uh, train others about. Well, and I guess in addition to, to helping their physical health, it it would help them mentally as well, and which would lead to better overall health. Certainly. This is, this is such an important thing. People have come from all over the world here for this uh, treatment. We've had people come from uh, really every, every inhabited continent for these treatments. Wow. And uh, I know you, you talked about some of the conferences, uh, that new, new uh, cardiovascular horizons that you guys helped put on. And... Uh, You've done, what are, what are some that you've done, uh, not, not just here locally, but I, I think you've gone to other countries to put some yes. of these on as well. China, I said we have three. We have um, one in Latin America. And then, of course, we speak at meetings around the world. We have many meetings. I was 
recently at, in China, in fact, at both the Great Wall meeting and the CEC meeting. We didn't put those on, but we were there. I'm going to be at the LINK meeting later on this year in Germany. Uh, so, so we speak at meetings around the world that are not just those that we put on, but those that others put on. Uh, it's a big effort to try to get the message out that we can do a better job here. And certainly we all have the responsibility to train others how to better treat this. And with, with the new uh, procedure that was just performed, uh, again, that was done at, at Terrebonne General. Yes, it uh, was. And um, is, is, is that a procedure that you need uh, staff to help you perform, uh, or is it, is it something that's not overly involved with? Well, or? I wouldn't call it an overly involved procedure. It's something very similar to what we've been doing for a long time. But we clearly need the help that we have. We have a wonderful team that has been put together um, here in the cath lab. I, I think we have one of the greatest teams I've personally seen, and I travel cath labs around the world. We have really a, a super team, and our success is, is not the success of any individual doctor. It's the fact that we have many very, very talented people working with us to help us achieve these results. Excellent. And, uh, you know, if anyone's out there, they're watching and they're going, you know what? Okay, it's time to get checked. I've been having this issue. You know, what should they do? Uh, what should they tell their doctor or, um, you know, to help make sure that they get the proper <laughs> treatment so that, you know, they can figure out if, if, if there is a diagnosis sure. that needs to be made? I think the first thing is to just ask for their foot pulses to be checked. If they're abnormal or if there are symptoms, then you take that next step. But that would be the beginning. And certainly anybody at, at bigger risk, diabetics and smokers in particular. All right. Dr. Walker, we appreciate you being here. And again, congratulations. And we thank you for continuing uh, to be innovative to make sure that, you know, not only CIS can continue to, to flourish, but ultimately it translates to us having better health care. So we thank you and your staff for that. Thank you. With that, we're going to take a short break. Um, we still have more to come right here on Bayou Time. And uh, I think Mike Fake is going to be here to do the sports a little later here. So stay with us. We have more right here on Bayou Time.